that? So, Kaiman, is that now the name of that ship that we're all sailing on into TVD land? Um, how's everybody doing this morning? Excellent. My name is Jarrett Weisselman, and I have been covering this show for six years. I've met a lot of you, I've tweeted with more of you, and it's safe to say there is no more dedicated fandom than the Vampire Diaries fandom. You guys wait in line, and because of your intense devotion, we are in Hall H for the very first time. So, are you guys ready for the biggest Vampire Diaries panel ever? Well, let's get it started. First up, star Michael Malarkey. The lovely Candace Akala. One half of all of our new favorite ships, Ian Summerhalder. Executive producer, Julie Pleck. Paul Wesley. Executive producer, Caroline Dries. And last, but by no means least, Kat Graham. Guys, give it up for the cast of The Vampire Diaries. I'm down there. <laughs> Are we allowed to sit? Yeah. Yes. Everyone, please. Oh, right Just waiting for the ladies to arrive. It must be very early. It's extremely quiet in here. <laughs> you guys can make... There you go. How many of you guys slept over last night? I love... Paul, let me go to you. I'm curious, when, back when Vampire Diaries actually featured diaries, did you ever envision that six years later you would be surrounded by 5,000 of your closest fans in the biggest Comic-Con ballroom there is? Um, I, I, wait, what does this have to do with diaries? You used to write in diaries, it's fine, we can move on. I just feel like when I, wanna, when I want to hear the fans go wild, I just need to say two words. Jared and Jensen. <laughs> Don't worry, they're coming up, they're coming up, they're coming up. All right, now, what was, your no, what was your question? What does it mean to see all of these people here for the show that you guys work so hard for? Um, uh, no, honestly, guys, uh, it's amazing. This is the first time in Hall H. I can't see the end of the room. Uh, I'm slightly intimidated. It's because you're drunk. Um, I am also <laughs> drunk. I haven't slept. Um, it means a lot. I know you guys woke up early, and, I, uh, and I, I speak on behalf of all of us. We really appreciate it, and we love you guys. Yeah. So, it's the truth. Thank you. Julia, it's been a very long journey you've all been on in Hall H. Is it in any way bittersweet that, you know, someone is missing who helped put the show on the map? Yeah, of course it's been... Oh, who, Jesus, who? I can't who? talk. <laughs> uh, yeah. What do you mean? The no, of course. Mark? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay... Of course, it's bittersweet. Uh, we miss Nina. She's been with us for six years. Uh, we miss Kevin. He's been with us for all that time, too. And both are back home in L.A. and uh, hopefully sending us good love from, from home. Absolutely. The, the sleeping curse, I think, was a really interesting way to sort of tie up that storyline. As a storyteller, what excites you about the opportunities afforded to you by having her sort of gone but not forgotten? Well, what's nice about it is there's still like a really intense core of romance, almost like in a fairy tale way attached to it. Damon, you know, has put the love of his life away, and, uh, and now he's got to figure out how he's... She's just taking it. a little nap. Just a little nap. <laughs> Six, 60, 70 years Yeah, nap. what's 67 years for a vampire? It'll go by like that. You know. By the way, I have no problem playing a 17-year-old in my mid-60s. <laughs> If I'm pulling it off at 32, guys, you know? <laughs> what, do you th what do you think? You don't, look, you don't look a day over 40, Paul. <laughs> you don't look a day over 40, buddy. That's what they tell me. So, I'm curious, Caroline, with uh, Bonnie and Elena sort of linked now, does the lovely Cat Graham have the best job security on this death-prone show? <laughs> Uh, Bonnie dies like every season, so uh, yeah, it's like nine lives. I'm not sure. We're probably at six maybe now, yeah. five or six. So yeah, she's got at least three seasons left in her. 
Nice. I like it. <laughs> Kat, what was your reaction when you found out how Bonnie would play into the Sleeping Beauty curse for Elena? You know, it was very interesting because I obviously, I've known that Nina was leaving for a long time, um, but I, uh, I thought it was a really clever way to um, kind of... Uh, kind of keep Elena there and keep her presence there um, and keep the door open in a lot of ways for her to be able to come back. Um, but it also created an interesting dynamic going into season seven for Bonnie and Damon and uh, them to have to deal with uh, the fact that, you know, it's Bonnie's alive and Elena's not and it's uh, kind of on Bonnie <laughs> to <laughs> but, stay alive. <laughs> but it felt super earned, you know, by having... Damon and Bonnie in the 90s together for so long. It was such a rich relationship by the time we got to the finale. I mean, for Ian and Kev, for both of you, what did you like about how that relationship sort of flourished last season? That was actually, I don't know, that was my favorite stuff that we've ever done. Yes. I think the beginning of season six for Bonnie and Damon was the best stuff ever. What do you think? <laughs> uh, it was a lot of fun and it was very dynamic and these two people, you know, it's funny because they hate each other, they love each other, they resent each other, they're stuck together. It's sort of a, an amazing recipe for a lot of cool drama. Yeah. But Kat and I love to work together because we work together with the same coach in the same way and we have a lot of really good fun. Yeah, one of my favorite episodes was the episode that Ian directed, and it was actually the first time that I'd ever been in a scene where the director is also the actor. So we had some really cool stuff, and uh, um, he, I'm excited that Ian, you're directing again in season seven, right? Is that the plan? Well, um, yeah, hopefully. Okay. I don't yes, know. absolutely. Sorry, I didn't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it, um, we're, we're going to do it again. I don't know. But uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. Um, it was really great for us to shoot some scenes together. And uh, definitely when, we got to, when I got to come back, it was great that one of my first scenes was definitely with Ian, and it was great. Yeah. Julie, talk a little bit about sort of Damon post Elena's Sleeping Beauty curse. I mean, is he a monk now? Or do you just like yeah. put that monk energy? my ass. <laughs> Do you just put that energy into sort of different areas of that character? <laughs> I'm waiting for Ian to make an inappropriate joke about putting that energy into different <laughs> just places. Just wait for it. Um, yeah, no, I mean, the, the challenge for Damon is obviously Elena said to him, please live your life and be who you are. And, and yet we know who Damon is. Uh, so I think for him, it's who am I without this girl right by my side? Because she's the center. She's the one that... She's the one that grounds me and makes me want to make the right decision and walk the straight line. Um, so for him, the line's going to get a little crooked, you know, and, and he's going to kind of probably hopscotch over it because I know you love to hopscotch. So, uh, he'll, you know, the struggle will be good. It, it's, uh, we'll get to see a lot of naughty Damon trying to not be naughty. I love hopscotch. <laughs> Ian, what, I mean, in some ways, it's sort of like you're playing a new Damon this year. That has to be exciting. Or an old Damon. Actually, on the, au contraire, mon frere. It's actually the exact It's opposite. actually the opposite. It's the old fucking Damon. <laughs> <laughs> the Damon that we really fell in love with. <clears throat> and that's the goal. It's that, you know, let's bring that back, that energy, that sexy, volatile, fun, scary, dangerous... All that shit that made you guys love him to begin with, I'm bringing it back. Caroline, as writers, what excites you guys about getting back to the root of Damon? Well, it's interesting, you know, we've seen Damon pining for Catherine for 145 years, and then he was pining for Elena, you know, seasons two through six. So it's fun for us as writers to think, what, who is Damon Salvatore when he's you know, not pining after a girl when he has his girl. And so, you know, it was interesting, like, I was just talking to Ian the other day, like, what does Damon do in his spare time? Like, what does he do when he's alone? And I... I <laughs> I'm um, still waiting <laughs> for Ian and Paul to What, what else does he do when he's alone? So, um... Oh, my. <laughs> a lot so, of stuff. So, I, it's, it's fun for writers to kind of get to dig a little deeper into the character. Yeah. And figure out, like, you know, what makes him tick. And we're going to see a lot of bromance between Stefan and Damon and see how the dynamic works now that their mom is kind of becoming part of Mystic Falls. Absolutely. As, uh, as sort of Delena moved into a crypt, as you were, there was the rising of another relationship on the Vampire Diaries. Woo! One that goes by the name of Steriline. 
By the way, can we change that name? By the way, guys. I was going to say, doesn't it sound so clean? Sounds like something in a hospital. We're actually going to make a hand sanitizer called Sterilize. Yeah, we're going to we're going to trademark it and sell it at Hall H. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, can you guys come up with a different name, though? Dude, you got, you're like, what you, Delena, like that's any better? Or <laughs> like, at least it, it doesn't sound like it's in a hospital. Yeah, De Delena sounds like it could potentially be a disease. <laughs> Steriline sounds like the cure for the disease. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was, that was actually good and witty, well, brother. I,